friends, long time no see. Hope you guys liked today's oil painting time lapse. You can find all of the art supplies used for today's video inside the video description. And stay tuned until the end of the video for some satisfying varnish action. All right, I wanna kick off this time lapse by quickly apologizing for being MIA on social media and just telling you guys that I've really missed you. As you all probably know, I've been kind of on a painting marathon recently. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen evidence of a couple of all-nighters where I've stayed up late painting due to ingesting too many cups of coffee late at night, and then um, I'm up until the sunrise. So I have really been just terrible at keeping up with posting on social media. Whenever I'm panicked for a gallery deadline, it's really easy for me to deprioritize social media for the more like tangible, urgent deadlines. And I really want to be better, so hopefully this video will signify the start of a more diligent uploading pattern for YouTube and for Instagram as well. Anyways, let's move on to the painting now. The concept and colors of this piece might look familiar to you, and that is because she is a sister painting of one of my older works from last year titled Magenta's Wish. Both pieces feature a magenta-haired underwater jellyfish mermaid, and I conceptualized them to be reminiscent of Medusa, so the same ways that snakes grow out of Medusa's head, I had the jellyfish grow out of and blend into the mermaid's hair. So I like to see them as kind of a more benevolent, friendly, underwater jellyfish Medusa, if you will. And also, I'm really sorry that I have to censor the breasts. While I personally don't believe that female nudity in oil paintings or art needs to be censored, um, I unfortunately have to operate within the confinements set forth by YouTube and other social media platforms. Because if I don't censor it, chances are, like they have in the past with um, both in my experience and also some of my artist friends, um, sometimes you upload a video or just any content that you spent a lot of time working on and then it just gets removed because a few people report it. I really hate having to do this, but sadly that's just now a necessity in order for my videos to stay up, in order for me to be able to monetize them, so please bear with me. Um, I do have uncensored versions of the pieces uploaded on my website and also on Patreon where I give out private, unlisted, unmonetized links. But yeah, hope you guys can understand. Okay, finally, sorry for all my rambling, um, I'm gonna move on to the main topic of this video, which is saying goodbye to your art. So many of you guys have reached out to me, asking me and also telling me that you have trouble saying goodbye to your paintings and your drawings. Um, on one hand, you know, we all want to be able to make a living and sustain ourselves, so making a sale is a great opportunity, but we get attached to our pieces. And I totally empathize with that sentiment. I felt it so much in the beginning. I still feel it to a mild degree, but I've gotten better at adhering to like a certain mental process that helps me have an easier time letting go, though it's still, you know, always on the back of my mind. So I want to share some of that insight with you guys to hopefully make the goodbye process a little easier. I think when all artists create our paintings or our drawings, they start to feel like an extension of us, almost kind of like our children. You know, we breathe life into them, we create them or imagine them in our minds. You know, we imagine what they would look like, how our characters will behave, what kind of personalities they have, what kind of stories our pieces will tell. And then slowly, bit by bit, painstakingly, we create this piece out of nothing. So something that started off as just an idea in our minds, slowly through our care and effort, gets rendered into something tangible that we can see, something we can hold. And then um, when you have to end up saying goodbye to them, you've already become attached. Like you've watched and nurtured this artwork 
to grow and to become alive and it really does feel like parting with your child or like your pet. But as time went on, I started thinking about the purpose of these artworks. You know, at first it was really tough to reconcile that pain of farewell, but later I realized that the artwork's purpose isn't to just be stored in my studio forever for me to look at. In fact, it's almost a more fulfilling journey for the piece itself if they get to be adopted into a new home and bring joy to other people, to as many people as possible. I kind of see myself now as almost a foster parent for, you know, kittens and puppies, where the point of doing what I do isn't to collect as many pieces or, you know, as many puppies and kittens as possible. It's to find suitable new homes for each and every artwork so that I can enable myself to create even more artwork and then find new homes for those pieces and so forth. Like I just, I realized that my joy isn't in the end result, the physical product of my work. My joy lies in being able to do the work in the first place. It's the joy of creating. So whenever I make a piece and I'm lucky enough to find a new home for the piece, not only is it giving the artwork itself a broader journey, a chance to, you know, find a new home and influence positively like a new family, but also it is a new opportunity for me to create more pieces, more artworks and just continue that cycle of creation. You know, this kind of all ties back in with social media as well and just the whole experience of sharing your artwork with others, whether it's you know, someone buying your original and having the original sit in someone's home or even something as accessible and easy as just sharing your artwork on social media and online for free. Um, I think so much of my joy lately from being an artist isn't just in the creating process, but also in the sharing process. You know, the two kind of, you know, go hand in hand. One can't really exist for a long time without the other. And, you know, when I think about my future and my aspirations for the rest of my life, I hope one day when I leave this world as an old woman, old, old woman, hopefully, um, that I can live on through my artwork. And I hope people can remember me through my art and that the legacy that I leave behind is positive and lasting. And, you know, I can't achieve that without saying goodbye sometimes to original pieces. Alrighty, and that is about it for today's video. Thank you guys as always for listening to me ramble and I hope that my words made sense and were even just a little bit helpful for those of you out there who are struggling with saying goodbye to your artworks. I'm always very open to hearing any suggestions you guys have of future video topics that you want me to cover. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the varnish. There is just something undeniably satisfying and even addictive about watching an oil painting being varnished. It's honestly probably my favorite part of the entire painting process. It's kind of like I never knew that my painting was missing all of these bright luminous colors, deep dark shadows and vivid highlights until I put the varnish over it and I can see just how much life there was hiding in the piece the whole time and all it needed was a small coat of varnish to bring out that life. I'm using my favorite varnish here which is Gamvar by Gamblin and a very nice sturdy brush from Royal and Lay Nickel and once again I'll be listing all of the supplies in the video description. After the varnish dries in about 24 hours or so, I put the painting inside this black ornate frame, which I think complements the regal feeling of the piece very well. Though the original has been sold, I have fine art prints available at my shop at happyd-artist.com. Also, I am so in love with these beautiful entries from my $1 coloring challenge. There's a new challenge every single month and you can participate by pledging $1 or more at patreon.com slash happydartist. 
And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and so much more, all available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!